Today we're going to be doing a heating cooling curve lab specifically for a chemical called lauric acid which is actually one of the ingredients found in the original soap. Uh, I believe it's still used today but I'm not sure to what extent. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at student data uh, from a previous year that had a good heating and cooling curve. This is something you would normally do on your own but uh, if you're virtual, you're not going to be able to do that. So on the back is the data, so it's all written down for you, and I am going to include uh, this data, pictures of this information in the uh, notebook page, so you, you don't have to worry about writing this all down or pausing it. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to graph the data, and we're going to get a heat and cooling curve. So you're going to need a sheet of graph paper. We're going to turn it sideways. We're going to want to put... Uh, this is going to be time on our X and temperature on our Y. The temperature is going to be in degrees Celsius. Your time is going to be in seconds. So for your time that's easy the actual numbers if you look they're right here so this is going to go 0 15 30 45 they're going to keep going to 270 and 285 respectively so you are going to be doing two graphs so for temperature i'm not sure how many boxes that is Three, six. I, I believe you can go by ones um or if you wanted to spread it out you could probably get more in there so let's see you have Nineteen boxes. Yep, so you have enough to go two per box. So we're going to start at zero, fifteen, thirty. 45, and then you're going to go all the way up out to 270, uh, and that should work. So let's see. Yep. And for temperature, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put a page break in, because if you notice, the temperature on the heating curve starts at 24, and on the cooling curve, it only goes down to 26. So what I would recommend doing is keeping them the same is I would go, I would start at 20. So that way we don't have to graph the bottom of that because it's there's going to be no um, data points on anything below 20. And we need to get up to 70. So two per box should work. So... 22, 24. Also, you should be doing this in pencil. I really shouldn't be doing this in uh, ink, but uh, if I make a mistake, I can just grab a new sheet of graph paper, erase this video, and start it over. So, And then you're also going to need a title. So for your title, let's do the heating curve. This one's just going to be called... Heating curve, lauric acid, cooling would be the same. And now I'm going to give you an example of what you should get. All right, so don't don't count this as the exact numbers. You're going to have to graph them your same, uh, graph them yourself. But these types of graphs have a tendency to look something like this. So I'm giving you worst case scenario. I think the data works a little better or looks a little better. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to say, you know, heating, cooling curves look like they look like this, right? Something like that. They look like a pair of stairs. But you have to remember in this heating, cooling curve, we didn't actually boil the material. So we only are graphing this section. This top part is not there. So it's only one of the steps. It's the solid and the liquid. There's no gas involved in this. And so what we're going to have to do is say, all right, it flattened out around here. 
Now, it could be that you get a series of like a couple in a row and then a couple more in a row, or it could be more of a gradual thing like this. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that somewhere in the middle, we saw it flattening out. So we draw a line that represents the flat part. Then, if you notice, I only went through a few of them. You don't have to. And then we say, all right, and here's clearly the down angle part. So it went down like that. And then up here, it's clearly the up. So again, you don't have to go through them all. This is really a best fit curve, but it's really a best fit in three segments. And there's your heating cooling curve. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna label everything. The phase here, the phase here, that part, that part, that direction, that direction, um, the endo exo, and in, the most important part is, since this is the heating curve, we'll call this the melting point. And when we do the um, cooling curve, we'll call it the freezing point. Now, theoretically, the, those temperatures, whatever number this is, you're gonna put it right here for your melting. They should, melting and freezing, should be the same. But in real life, that actually never works. Well, it usually doesn't work out that way. And they are similar, but they might be a few degrees apart. And there's a bunch of reasons for that. But either way, you're going to take your melting point that you got from your lab and your freezing point that you get from your lab. And again, you have to identify it by figuring out where the flat part is and bring, bringing the temperature over, right? Um, and you're going to write them in here. Those are going to be the measured values because someone did it. You didn't, but a student did it. And then at the very bottom, it says the actual freezing point. So that's the accepted value. And it's for both because they should be the same. And so this is going to be the accepted value, but it's in Kelvin. You're going to have to convert to Celsius. K equals C plus 273. These numbers are in Celsius, so you're fine there. And then you're going to do a percent error formula. Percent error equals... I want to see all the work for that. The accepted value is going to be from here. This turned into Kelvin. It's going to be the same accepted value for both the melting and the freezing. And then the measured value, they may be the same. Every once in a while, you get a group that does it. I just took this um, from a group because the graph looked nice. Um, and I just copied the data over by, by hand. And so uh, you're going to get two, uh, a melting point and a freezing point, And then those are going to be your measured values. And then that's the whole lab. And then they think there's two questions at the bottom. And you're done.